T-Rock set a more fashionable trend for compact Volkswagen SUVs, representing the brand in the affordable, style-conscious end of the fast-growing mid-sized crossover segment. Four years into its production run, it was lightly updated with sharper looks inside and out, creating the model that we look at here. As before, almost everything you can't see on this car comes from a Golf hatch, which is no bad thing. As for the stuff you'll admire in the driveway, well, it all looks satisfyingly fashionable. From launch in 2018, the T-Roc provided an entry point to Volkswagen's SUV range. But these days, two models, the Tygo and the T-Cross, sit beneath it. So the T-Roc, which unlike those two Polo-based designs, rides on the underpinnings of a larger Golf, needed a bit of a spruce up to justify its continuing place in the range. Hence the midterm facelift we examine here. With over a million sales on the board, it's supposed to appeal to customers who want something larger than a super mini based crossover design, but don't want to stretch up to Volkswagen's mid-sized Tiguan SUV. People who want something trendier, which is why the T-Roc also comes in Cabriolet and hot hatch T-Roc R forms. There's lots of competition these days though for this type of car, so this improved T-Roc will need to be good. If you're attracted by it, You'll need the usual comprehensive car and driving road test to tell you everything you really need to know. Volkswagen hasn't made any dynamic upgrades as part of this midterm T Rock update. And not much is very different on the engine front either, mainly because the mild hybrid units from the Golf 8 won't work with the older version of the MQB platform in use here, nor will that car's available plug-in hybrid powertrain. At its original launch, the T-Roc was promoted as the SUV from the inventor of the GTI, a reference to the car's chassis development chief, Karsten Schebstadt, whose credits include current versions of the playful Golf GTI Club Sport and Polo GTI models. If you like your driving, don't get your hopes up in that regard. This is a very different kind of car. There's not much fun to be had punting a mainstream T-Roc model about, and even less on offer if you should choose the alternative Cabriolet version, which we cover in a separate film. Here, our comments are based on this conventional SUV body style. Seek out engagement at the wheel of one of these, and you'll find that plenty of grip and decent body control mark this out as one of the more adept small crossovers you could choose. Plus, there's quick reacting steering, which can be further improved by adding Volkswagen's progressive system that reduces the amount of lock you have to apply through tight turns. Driving modes don't feature as standard on mainstream models, and ride quality isn't quite as good as in a Polo or a Golf, inevitably given the extra weight and higher stance, but again, it's a decent showing by class standards. As before, there are four TSI petrol engines. Almost all T-Roc folk choose between the first two of them, a 115 PS, one litre, three cylinder unit, only offered with a six speed manual transmission, or a 150 PS, four cylinder power plant, which can offer the additional alternative of a seven speed DSG also. Stick with the former if you're mainly urban based, but factor in the latter if you do the occasional longer trip. Or in that event, consider a diesel, the sort of thing that rivals increasingly decline to offer in this sector, but which Volkswagen is still very much wedded to thanks to its now cleaner levels of TDI technology. This has to be entirely two litre based these days, so the previous 1.6 litre TDI unit makes way for a detuned two litre TDI unit with the same 115 PS output, which has to be mated with manual transmission. As before, there's also a top 150 PS 2 litre TDI model, and if you want this with a DSG Auto gearbox, you'll be offered the option of having it with Volkswagen's 4-motion four four-wheel drive system. Four-wheel drive, by the way, is another thing surprisingly hard to find in this segment. 
Petrol models with the four motion system are super rare because there the all wheel drive system can only be mated with the thirstier two litre TSI unit, which has to be had with the DSG Auto. That two litre TSI engine is offered in 190 PS form in the mainstream range or with 300 PS in the T Rock R performance model re-engineered for the extra power. That top R variant features a stiffer aluminium subframe, 20% firmer springs, a 20mm drop in ride height, uprated brakes, shorter gear ratios and the option of DCC adaptive damping. We have a separate test film on the T-Rock R if you're interested in that. None of this will be of much interest to the typical T-Rock buyer, someone who won't need a powerful engine or four-wheel drive. Of more importance for these people will be attributes like this Volkswagen's easy urban manoeuvrability. There's an 11.1 metre turning circle and when parking it's easy to judge where all four corners of the car are. Plus there's a slick six-speed manual gearbox, reassuring brakes and with all the engines, punchy mid-range acceleration. Refinement's impressive too, provided that on the one-litre model, you don't mind the rather endearingly vigorous three-cylinder soundtrack that's delivered under hard acceleration. In short, it's all rather golf-like, and for a car of this kind, that can only be a good thing. The T-Roc has always sold on its fashionable design and Volkswagen hasn't tampered with that very much as part of this update. As before, almost all sales will be of this high-riding SUV hatch body style with a wilder-looking T-Roc R performance version at the top of the range and there's the continuing option of a cabriolet body style too. In profile, the things that marked the T-Roc out before mark it out now. This elongated silhouette with a chrome frame stretching from the A-pillars across the entire roof to the C-pillars, plus a relatively low roofline, short overhangs and a steeply raked C-pillar above meaty-looking rear haunches. Volkswagen talks of generous ground clearance and coupe-like sidelines, but that's very much subjective. What's more pertinent is the size, a narrow niche that sees the 4,236mm length slotted carefully in amongst the brand's other compact SUVs. It's 126mm longer than the T-Cross, just 35mm shorter than a Tygo and 273mm shorter than a Tiguan. Large wheel rims of between 16 and 17 inches make it seem a little bigger than it is though. We've got 17 inch Johannesburg alloys here. And if you avoid base trim, you've the option of adding a contrasting color to the roof too. Most of the visual changes to this updated model feature here at the front where this revised grille is flanked by new LED headlamps that can, as here, feature Volkswagen's intelligent IQ light system that uses a matrix of 24 LEDs in each headlight module. Further down, these curious corner panels framed by daytime running light strips have been restyled as has the bumper and the cooling ducts just below it. As before, the whole thing's underscored by a token lower silver skid plate panel to complete the crossover effect. At the rear, the tail lamps gain brighter LED illumination and darkened lenses, but otherwise things are much as before. Again, a lower silver skid plate finishes things off, and of course, as with all Volkswagen models of this size, everything sits upon a golf-style MQB platform. OK, of more significance are the changes that lie within, so let's take a look. At its original launch in 2018, we found ourselves somewhat disappointed with this t rox cabin. Trendy style touches didn't compensate for too many hard plastics and standards of materials quality that felt well below those of a comparably priced Golf. Now we find ourselves feeling slightly different. Yes, a Golf interior still feels nicer, but the gap has been closed by a general t rock cabin upgrade that primarily adds this soft-touch foam-cushioned dash top, smarter door cards and revised switch gear. And in a t rock you don't have to battle with the rather confusing futuristic screen fest that marks out the cabin of a Golf 8. 
You'll want to know what else is new. Well, this smarter steering wheel with its stitched supple leather and capacitive controls and this digital cockpit instrument display screen is now standard, supplied either in base 8-inch form or, more usually, in this larger, more sophisticated 10.25-inch digital cockpit pro, guys. As usual, with this setup in Volkswagen Group models, there's a steering wheel view button to vary screen formats, which include full-width mapping. And when two virtual gauges are selected, other buttons on the wheel allow you to tailor what you view in the centre of the display. The two outer gauges have customizable central sections with info you can change via a digital cockpit option on the central infotainment screen. This glass-fronted middle screen comes in a couple of sizes too, 8 inches as standard, either in base ready to discover guys, or as here in nav-equipped discover media form. Or there's the more sophisticated 9.2 inch discover pro monitor, which gains extra features including intuitive voice control. The whole setup looks much as before, but actually has been thoroughly upgraded with third generation MIB3 software that hasn't made it much quicker to react, but enables a variety of extra online-based functions and services. Things like online voice control, access to streaming services like Apple Music, cloud-based personalization based on user recognition, an embedded SIM card allowing access to Volkswagen's WeConnect streaming services, and wireless integration of the familiar built-in Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring setup. So, plenty of effort's gone into this update, and the stuff carried over from before still works well. This trendy body-coloured centre fascia trimming panel, the lightly raised driving position, supportive seats with lumbar support, and generally well-judged ergonomics, though your rear view is compromised by the large C-pillars, so you'll need the standard rear parking sensors. You might not like all this facelifted model's changes. The fake stitching on the dash top, the easy to accidentally operate haptic steering wheel buttons and the sliders added to the redesigned climate controls on the centre stack. Plus, there's still rather too much hard grainy plastic about for our liking, given the prices Volkswagen wants to charge here. Plenty of it still abounds on the lower half of the dash and you'll come across it frequently when using the door bins and glove box. But build quality from the Portuguese factory seems solid and there's plenty of space to stash stuff. The door bins and glove box just mentioned are big. There's a large cubby with twin USB-C ports and a 12 volt socket at the base of the center stack. Cup holders and a coin tray behind the gear stick, a drawer beneath the driver's seat and another storage bin between the seats with a ratcheting lidded top that acts as an armrest. Time to take a seat in the back. Now, the doors open reasonably wide and the T-Rock has a slightly higher rear seating position than a golf hatch, which makes access easier and will help you if you regularly have to take child seats or booster cushions in and out. Inside, the room on offer is fine by the standards of space in comparable small crossovers, though that's not saying a great deal. The bench doesn't slide or do anything clever like it does in a larger VW Tiguan or in a direct class rival like the similarly sized Renault Capture. But despite the coupe-like rear styling, there's OK headroom, providing you haven't spent extra on the available panoramic roof. A couple of six-foot passengers can just about sit behind a couple of equally lanky front seat occupants with some degree of comfort, but if there's a middle occupant, then they will need to sit legs astride this central transmission tunnel. But the doors are big, there are seat back pockets, you get an armrest with twin cup holders, and these twin USB-C ports are provided below the centre vents. Finally, let's take a look out back. Now, boot capacity varies a little depending on the drive layout you've chosen. Rated at 445 litres for a front-driven model like this one, which is 17% more than a Golf, or 392 litres in a four-motion equipped four-wheel drive variant. 
It's a lot less in the cabriolet version, of course, just 280 litres there. The cargo area is a good square shape. Seven carry-on suitcases will fit in this front-driven version. And there are the usual tie-down points and bag hooks, plus lots of space beneath the floor. Though only because, unfortunately, Volkswagen declines to provide any sort of spare wheel. At least that enables you to properly use the standard adjustable height boot floor and put loads of stuff beneath it. There's also a ski hatch for longer items and push forward the 60-40 split backrest and 1,042 litres of space can be freed up. It's evidence of the current spiralling state of new car pricing that a car we tested as recently as 2018, costing from around £19,000, is at the time of this test in autumn 2022, priced in this only very lightly facelifted form from around £26,000 just four years later. And that figure is anything but typical of the kind of some people are likely to pay for T-Rock ownership. At the time of this test, getting on for £30,000 was more representative of the sort of sum you'll need for the T-Rock you might have in mind. That's the kind of price tag attached to this mid-range style variant, which sits just above the base spec life and just below top spec R-line grades. A word on your transmission choices. A manual gearbox is mandatory on the base 1-litre TSI petrol and 2-litre TDI 115 PS diesel variants. If you want auto transmission, you'll have to stretch to either the 1.5-litre TSI 150 PS petrol engine we're trying here or the 2-litre TDI 150 PS diesel and either way pay an extra £1,685. Auto transmission is mandatory on the rapid but thirsty 2-litre TSI 190 PS 4 motion petrol model and you'll also have to have it if you want the 2-litre TDI 150 PS 4 motion diesel. That 4 motion system, an extra £1,310 over the cost of the ordinary front-driven 2-litre TDI 150 PS DSG variant. Got all that? Good. The top T-Rock R, which of course has auto transmission and 4 motion as standard, is almost a separate model and very much commands a separate price of around £42,000. The T-Rock Cabriolet is basically a separate model and at the time of this test, priced from around £31,500. It comes with only two trim levels, Style and R-Line, and just two engines, both petrol units, the 1-litre TSI and the 1.5 TSI, the latter with an auto transmission option. But our focus here is on the T-Roc SUV body style. In Volkswagen's SUV range, it's closely grouped with the similarly engineered Tygo for an equivalent version, think around £2,500 less, and the slightly smaller T-Cross, like for like, think around £3,500 less. The brand's bigger Tiguan is pricier, costing from around 30000 in base 1.5 TSI form at the time of this test, which is about £1,500 more than a 1.5 TSI T-Rock. By the way, if you're wondering, T-Rock money is about the same as you'd pay for an equivalently engined Golf. There are, of course, lots of rivals from other brands competing in the same market space, by which we mean just above smaller SUVs like the Ford Puma and the Nissan Duke. They're targeted by the Volkswagen T-Cross. And just below mid-sized family SUVs like, say, a Ford Cougar or a Peugeot 3008. They're targeted by the VW Tiguan. You might think that leaves a bit of a slim niche, but nevertheless, it's big enough to split into two parts. One is for conventional looking SUV models like Nissan's Qashqai, or the two VW Group contenders which share this T-Rock's engineering, Skoda's Karok and Seat's Attica. The other is for more fashion orientated SUV models like this T-Rock, which shares its market space and mostly its pricing with trendier models in this class like the Kia Exceed and the Toyota CHR. Maybe also the Jeep Renegade and the Mini Countryman. Let's say you've considered all of those and concluded that it is a T-Rock you really want. Your decision then might be sealed by a generous level of equipment. Is that what's served up here? Well, let's see. Even base live trim gets a reasonable amount. LED headlights, power folding mirrors, auto headlamps and wipers, LED tail lights and roof rails all make the team sheet, as do 16-inch Chester 
alloy wheels. Plus, there's adaptive cruise control and all-round parking sensors. Volkswagen's WeConnect Plus app will allow you to interact with your car via your smartphone when you're away from it. And inside, with LifeSpec, there's an 8-inch digital cockpit instrument screen, ambient lighting, air care, climatronic climate control, an auto-dimming rear-view mirror, driver's seat lumbar support, a ski hatch and a variable height boot floor. Media connectivity is taken care of by an 8-inch ready-to-discover with wireless app connect, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, an eSIM for online connectivity and a six-speaker DAB audio system. Most T-Rock customers, though, want the mid-range style trim level we're trying here, identifiable by larger 17-inch Johannesburg alloy wheels, silver roof rails, rear privacy glass and LED plus headlamps with LED separate daytime running lights. Plus, you can add a contrasting colour to the roof. Inside, with style spec, the instrument cluster upgrades to the 10.25-inch digital cockpit pro setup, and the centre screen gains GPS mapping in nav-equipped Discover Media form. There are sports comfort front seats, and the upholstery is of the nicer suede-like Art Velour microfleece type. Stretching to sportier R-Line spec gets you sharper-looking bumpers, 17-inch Valencia Galvano grey wheels, sharper progressive steering and sports suspension. Inside, with R-Line spec, there's heated front seats, stainless steel pedals and a black roof liner. Finally, the standalone T-Rock R model is identified by a bespoke R styling pack, 18-inch Jerez alloy wheels and inside sports seats, sports steering wheel, R branding and blue interior lighting. You're most likely, though, to be choosing a mainstream T-Rock model like this one. What are the key options you're going to need to look at? Well, we've got a number fitted here, a rear view camera and the winter pack, which gives you heat for the front seats and washer jets, plus, rather randomly, a washer fluid level indicator. The optional sports pack gives you driving profile selection, driving modes, sharper progressive steering, sports suspension, and rather strangely, given the pack name, an eco function. The R-Line and R-Spec models allow you to pay extra for DCC, or Dynamic Chassis Control Adaptive Damping, too. You're going to need the optional spare wheel, and you may like to have keyless entry and the optional larger 9.2-inch Discover Pro central infotainment screen. And you'll probably want to add a smartphone charger, too. If you've really got cash to burn on your T-Rock, then there's leather upholstery, a panoramic glass roof and ergo active massaging front seats. Plus, style seekers can add a black design pack and more practical folk will want to look at the various load liners, luggage nets, perhaps a tow bar and the available roof bars that will allow you to fit racks for roof boxes, bikes, skis and snowboards. Unless you specify your T-Rock in Dewar Ascot Grey, you'll almost certainly have to pay extra for your choice of paint colour. And you certainly will if you want a contrasting roof colour. Not too much has changed in terms of T-Rock safety kit. Standard camera assisted features include front assist autonomous braking, lane keeping lane assist, high beam assist and a driver alert system. Avoid base trim and you get dynamic roadside display too. Plus, across the range, there are all the usual passive features, including twin front side and curtain airbags. Though, unfortunately, you do without the driver's knee bag you'll find on a Tiguan. There are Isofix child seat fastenings, a tyre pressure loss indicator and anti-whiplash front head restraints. In addition, across the range, the Wolfsburg brand has installed eCall, which alerts the emergency services with your GPS location if the airbags go off. And a clever automatic post-collision braking system that automatically brakes the car down to six miles an hour after a collision. So, if, say, someone hits you and, understandably, you go to pieces, the car will automatically sort itself out. You can also ask your dealer about Volkswagen's clever travel assist system, which in concert with the ACC cruise control setup, can take care of a lot of the driving duties for you at highway speeds. It enables assisted steering, braking and acceleration at speeds of up to 130 miles an hour.
by integrating the signals from the front camera as well as GPS and map data. The system can incorporate local speed limit information, town boundary signs, junctions and roundabouts. OK, let's assume you're among the growing number of buyers switching into a fashionable little SUV like this one from a conventional family hatch. So, in this case, you're moving from a Golf into this T-Rock. What will the running cost penalty be for that higher set driving position and those more fashionable looks? Well, to answer that, let's consider what's predicted to be the best-selling T-Rock engine, the 1.0-litre TSI three-cylinder petrol unit. It manages up to 47.1 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 136 grams per kilometer of co2 returns that until recently a diesel model would have struggled to reach in this class but it's still a chunk behind an identically engined volkswagen golf which manages up to 52.3 mpg and up to 122 grams per kilometer mainly due to the fact that this t-rox curb weight is around 60 kilos more than its conventional hatchback counterpart you may well decide you could live with that, and if you can, you might very well also decide to upgrade yourself to the 150 PS 1.5 TSI petrol model we're trying here, because its fuel and CO2 returns are virtually no different. That's thanks to a cylinder on-demand system that cuts off two of the engine's four cylinders under light to medium throttle loads. As for the TDI diesels, well, if you opt for the base front-driven 115 PS variant, it should be possible to get up to 60.1 mpg and up to 122 grams per kilometer of CO2. For the gutsier 150 PS 2.0-litre TDI variant, it's 58.9 mpg and 125 grams per kilometer. All these, by the way, are manual model figures, but there's very little efficiency downside in opting for the alternative 7-speed DSG Automatic. A DSG Auto in a T-Rock 2.0-litre TDI 150 PS model, fitted out with VW's heavy 4-motion all-wheel drive system, though, is a slightly different kettle of fish. One of those can only manage up to 51.4 mpg and up to 145 grams per kilometre of CO2. But of course, that's still a much more efficient way of getting a four-motion T-Rock than choosing a petrol all-wheel drive version. The 2.0-litre TSI four-motion 190 PS model manages only 38.2 mpg and 168 grams per kilometre, or in top T-Rock R performance form, bests of 33.2 mpg and 194 grams per kilometre. All the figures we've given you are for this SUV body style and you'll be able to get closer to them with the car's eco function deployed, though you only get that as part of an extra cost sports pack. The considerable extra weight that the Cabriolet model has to carry about dents things a bit here. As we mentioned earlier, we've covered that variant off for you in a separate film. For this SUV version, insurance ratings start at Group 15E for the 1.0-litre TSI or from Group 21E for this 1.5-litre TSI variant. The 2.0-litre TDI 115 PS diesel variant rates from Group 18E. The 2.0-litre TDI 150 PS model rates from Group 22E. At the top of the range, the 2.0-litre TSI 4Motion rates from Group 26E and the T-Rock R is rated at Group 33E. As for servicing, well, as usual with Volkswagen models, there's a choice of either fixed or flexible maintenance packages. You'll choose the fixed approach if you cover less than 10,000 miles a year, and with this, the car will typically be looked at every 12 months. If your daily commute is more than 25 miles and your T-Rock will regularly be driven on longer distance journeys, you'll be able to work with a flexible regime that can see you travelling up to 18,000 miles between garage visits or every two years, whichever is sooner. And warranties? Well, the standard package is three years and 60,000 miles. Strip away the funky bodywork and the cabin personalisation and what you've got here is a slightly less efficient but slightly more fashionable alternative to a Golf. But then you could say similar things of just about any other compact to mid-sized SUV contender in this growing segment. 
It's all about giving the market what it wants. And with the T-Roc, Volkswagen has done just that. Are there problems? Well, interior space perhaps, but then if you wanted that in a compact Volkswagen SUV, you'd probably stretch up to a Tiguan. This facelifted T-Roc model addresses the original model's issue that some of the cabin trimming felt a little down market. Here, things are improved, but you might still want for more given the pricing applied to plusher models. Fortunately, there's enough technology now provided to make this less noticeable. The top derivatives are quite expensive, though, which brings into focus the fact that amongst rivals in this segment, there are plenty of slightly cheaper alternatives. Most of them, though, lack this T-Rocks want-one factor. And the way this part of the market is these days, that'll probably be very significant in keeping this as Volkswagen's third best-selling model.